Hello, welcome back to Notes from the Second Floor. I'm Shannon Calder and this is Paul Welch, Executive Vice President of the AIA California Council. In our last episode, we identified problems in the public procurement of design services. We're going to further that discussion today to identify what could be more problematic. Anticipate that in hard times, agencies will understandably focus first on cost? While we are continuously engaged with public agencies throughout the year, there is a serious increase in poor practices uh, that uh, post-recession years become common practice. And these practices are of concern to the profession. What are some other poor procurement practices that are being employed by public agencies? There are three practices that we're concerned about. One is the double envelope system, which is employed uh, by uh, some public agencies throughout California. They ask competing firms to submit two envelopes. One envelope concerns the firm's qualifications, and the second envelope there are the fees for the project. After they open the first envelope and rank the firms, then they open the second envelope and begin negotiations uh, at the lowest fee that has been submitted by, by a competing firm. And we've talked about how fees submitted in the selection process are done in the absence of the scope of the project. And it's very difficult for a firm to, to have any accurate fee quotations based on the scope that uh, has not yet been developed. The second uh, is concerning uh, design competitions, which are becoming increasingly employed by public agencies. Uh, a couple of problems with design competitions. One, they are uh, increasingly expensive for teams to participate in design competitions with a cost uh, approaching a half a million dollars for on a larger project. The costs of design competitions are not only uh, becoming problematic for large firms, but they're all almost impossible for small firms uh, to compete. And the second problem that we have with, uh, with design competitions is that uh, while some design competitions have stipends to help reimburse the, firm, the teams for uh, uh, the cost of competing, uh, most often the stipend is nowhere near what it takes to put on a comp uh, to participate in a competition and many competitions have uh, don't have any uh, uh, stipends at all for the competing firms uh, the last uh, concern or the last procurement process which is a concern to us is uh, there there are frequently uh, uh, procurement processes that require an exorbitant number of exhibits uh, from uh, competing firms. Exhibits, number of exhibits that far exceeds th those that are necessary to determine the qualifications of a firm. And the more exhibits required, the more costly it is for firms to participate. Fewer firms are able to participate and so but the net result of these procurement practices, uh, which I think are problematic for the public benefit and for the profession, is that fewer and fewer firms are able to participate in public projects, and that is not in the public's best interest. Well, perhaps an uninformed perspective, how does a public client's focus on price influence procurement practices? Qualification space selection requires that firms first be selected on the basis of qualifications. Later, during negotiations, then fees are introduced and negotiated and firms are selected. When fees become the primary uh, focus of the public client, and it usually becomes the criteria for shortlisting the firms and selecting the firm that gets the project. The problem is, is that part of the project development is defining the scope and the nature of the client 
services. And but until that is done, it is not uh, it, firms are not able to give uh, fee quotes or or what it's going to cost to do a project because the project has not yet been fully defined. And that wraps up another edition of Notes from the Second Floor. Tune in next time when we'll be talking one more time about QBS and what it means for the public as well as the architectural profession.